Hey, elephant, I'm more ancient than you. Someday I will engulf the solar system. What was and what will be is meaningless. Meanwhile, you should wonder. Are you just a two-headed pile of meat on a crash course with a cosmic dump? Or do you contain the sole memory of a million dead stars? How do you light a candle without a match? Adventure Time, despite its sugary-coated appearance, I mean, have a candy kingdom for Christ's sake, you can go more sugary than that, always seem to have something eerie about it, and a lot of the times, actual horror or scary things that would terrify me as a kid something that it was even banned from multiple countries because it's outright terrifying for a kids show especially everywhere you will die <laughs> what you your family everyone will die over and over mountains of broken bodies beneath the wheel <sighs> The horror of Adventure Time doesn't really just stop at scary faces and scary characters that want to kill you or to eat you. You know, it goes deeper than this. Adventure Time has its own way of creating this unease. For example, multiple times throughout the show, in the background, you can see signs that the world of Adventure Time is just our world, but in a post-apocalyptic scenario. This used to be the world we lived in, but something big happens. Something that is later established as the Mushroom War. Mushroom being a reference to the fact that nuclear explosions create mushroom clouds, right? So, every time Finn goes by something like a building or something like a car that we recognize as being something from our lives, but in this world where they have crazy zombies and mutated people and all kinds of creatures, we feel eerie about it because we know this is our world, but after a nuclear Holocaust. In my last Adventure Time video, I talked about how the Lich represents and embodies the concept of extinction, the end of all life. But something I only touched upon is the fact that I think he is an antithesis to Finn the Human. What I mean by that is that the Lich doesn't really act like other cartoon villains. He really embodies a certain type of cosmic horror. He really embodies the fact that humanity is not special and that at any point it can be erased. Because that's what he did. When the Mushroom War, which I mentioned earlier, happened, it erased almost all humans, except a few. And the Lich is the embodiment of that nuclear holocaust. Because, again, he embodies extinction. That is, in my opinion, an antithesis to Finn, thematically speaking. Because Finn is supposed to represent hope. And the hope of humanity of surviving and going further. Not only that, but the hope in general for anything. That's why I feel like they're parallels to each other. But if let's say you take Finn out of the equation, the Lich is a perfect embodiment of how life and especially humans are minuscule, which is essential to cosmic horror more so in Adventure Time, which is a series which establishes a certain amount of cosmic beings, like Prismo, a Wishmaster, a guy who lives beyond all dimensions, and he's a 2D guy, the Cosmic Howl, a cosmic 
entity that can travel through your dreams and make them real just by being there. Or Golb, the embodiment of discord and an ancient primordial being like Argalorg who existed before time and before anything. Before there was time, before there was anything, there was nothing. And before there was nothing, there were monsters. Those things are concepts that come from cosmic horror or Lovecraftian horror. And while Avenger Time is obviously a kids show, they can't really show too much, it really is the starter pack for enjoying cosmic horror. Cosmic horror for beginners or for kids. Very much like Courage the Cowardly Dog, which also had a few episodes that borderline on cosmic horror. And just in general, the setting of Courage the Cowardly Dog is very cosmic horror-esque. But coming back to Adventure Time, even the way the Lich talks, for example, makes him seem more important than normal villains from normal kids shows because he is because again and i'm gonna repeat myself he's not just a character he is an abstract he is the embodiment of the ending of all life he doesn't do it for fame or for power he does it because that is his goal he is perfect he is amazing in his simplicity something i really like about the adventure time comics is that they really go all out with the cosmic horror i mean just just look at this look at what i'm showing on screen those characters are literally lovecraftian monsters they come from beyond existence beyond space and time and they are beyond comprehension and understanding of normal beings right and even when one of them arrives the other cosmic beings remember in this panel in this page you have basically death itself a being that can destroy universes and a god of basically dreams being kind of terrified or at least a little scared of this entity that comes from beyond existence that's very powerful that's very very scary because it puts you into perspective that someone like Prismo who can destroy universes is scared a little of those guys and someone like that that itself it's even a little scared of these guys it's the comics are pretty good and uh, they really they really exemplify especially what I like about Adventure Time. Even in the show itself, you have creatures like Orgolorg, which um, is one of those creatures that existence before everything, and before nothing, and before time, and etc. And he looks like a Lovecraftian god. He, he looks like that because he's basically that and you have this thing in the show and then you have something like the Catalyst Comet which is this being this purple thing that I cannot even really describe it's kind of like a ball with eyes and it asks Finn if he wants to be one with him and that he's also him because it's because Finn is the reincarnation of the comet itself 
it's like so complicated. I like the the best parts of Adventure Time is the parts that you don't understand because they're so visceral that you would you would need to, to really think about those things too much for your own sake to understand them. And I feel like that's what is beautiful about it. And I love those little snippets when the multiverse is mentioned or other dimensions or other universes, other parts of the planet or the universe because it always gives you a feeling that there is more to Adventure Time, there is more to this world and there is so much of it that there might be a, the case that one day a god from beyond existence might come to Adventure Time and destroy everything, might come and be the scariest thing ever and it wouldn't be out of place for a show like Adventure Time because that's just how Adventure Time is. It's basically a Lovecraftian show for kids. It's basically like... How do I put this? It's like... The DC, or I guess not DC, but you get it. The Sandman, but like... In a show for kids. And there's things about it that I can't even describe because it's just the the vibe and the aesthetic and the feeling you get while watching it. Those are things that I'm not articulate enough to, you know, describe to you. So just go watch some Adventure Time stuff. If you don't watch Adventure Time or don't like Adventure Time or something, just go into the comment sections, ask me for specific episodes, and I'm going to give you some episodes that are actually very uh, scary or very appropriate for you to watch in the context of this video and what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Um, see you next time. I am Ghost Tornado. Bye. This cosmic dance of bursting decadence and withheld permissions twists all our arms collectively, but if sweetness can win, and it can, then I'll still be here tomorrow to high-five you yesterday, my friend. Peace.